Good afternoon and welcome to Markets Today. Today being Wednesday the 12th of February 29, uh, 2020, we are very delighted to have you join with us today. We're giving you an overview of what's happening on the Securities Exchange. We are also taking a different trajectory. Now recall, if you have been watching our shows over the last couple of days, we've been taking a sector-specific view and trying to understand where is there value on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Later on in today's show, we will be taking a deep dive into the insurance sector. Before we actually start looking at the companies at a specific level, we do want to understand what does this sector um, I mean, uh, involve in as far as the revenues are concerned? Is it a profitable sector? Is it worth your while? Why do we ask this? Now, look at the share prices of the listed uh, uh, insurance providers in this country. Now, Britam is at about 8.7 shillings. You have Jubilee at about 352 shillings. You have CIC at below the three shilling mark, as well as Kenya Re, Re also below the three shilling mark. In other words, why is this sector that has been there since time immemorial not able to give uh, sufficient returns to you as an investor? Is there anything that is possibly about to change? And is there anything to to be taken off the table in as far as being a possible shareholder in the future is concerned. That is a discussion that we will be having later on and I will introduce our guest who will help us to understand this industry in a better light. Before we get into that, yesterday was a public holiday on the, in Kenya, meaning that the Nairobi Securities Exchange was closed. Trading was largely muted on Monday. Nothing happened yesterday. The key corporate news that you need to be focusing on is mainly this. Barclays Bank of Kenya has changed its legal and its trading name to APSA Group. You will be trading it as APSA Group on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. There will no longer be a ticker, or rather the name Barclays Bank of Kenya, on the NSC. It is something to just look out for if you are looking to play place orders or if you get expecting any communication from the bank. Does this mean anything from the price? Not really. It's just a change of name, equivalent to you being married and changing your names. Nothing much has changed for this particular company in terms of its operations. It's just the trading name that has changed. That is absolute group anytime that you're interacting with it at a legal perspective or on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Now let's circle back to our topic of the day, the insurance sector. So what? Are you able to make any money from this sector as a shareholder or not? And what are the possible drivers for this particular sector? We are joined in studio by Mr. Washington De Gea. He is the chairman of the Bima Intermediaries Association of Kenya. Welcome to the show, Washington. Thanks for that. Thanks for having me. All right. The insurance sector. It's a simple but yet very complicated industry. When mm. we talk about insurance in Kenya, what are we talking about? We are basically talking about one of the pillars of uh, having the, uh, one of the strong pillars of the economy. We yeah. say, there's one thing we say about insurance. Okay. That you cannot have a strong economy without a strong insurance sector because economic growth and insurance go together. Go together. Right? Okay. So, um, um, wh what I mean by that is that the more the economy grows, then should a calamity arise, then you need to get uh, someone compensating you for the same, not you going back to your pocket to start all over again, okay. so to speak. That's why insurance is so, so important. It prevents you from going back into your profits and eating your profits. Okay. So uh, it's, it's an imperative um, uh, parameter in as far as you're looking at the overall growth of any economy. But for Kenya, is that the case? Especially when we talk about things such as the penetration levels of insurance in uh, this country. You know, l let me say, the, the, from where I sit, yes. there's a certain aspect of insurance that um, really leaves a lot to be desired. Because we don't see insurance growth as much as it should be. Because there are so many uh, wrong things happening in the insurance sector. Okay. When you talk about compensation, compensation should be instant, without a drama. When you get into a calamity, when you get into an accident, when your business burns down, you should get paid without frustrations, yes, so to speak. Indeed. So you should be able to have business continuity just because you have an insurance cover. That's right. Okay. It, it should give you the confidence. That's not the case. The, 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 the mental calmness yes. to go on with your life, yes. knowing that your insurance company is going to come through for you. Okay. Right? All right. But why do so many people have uh, saying, I'd rather not insure? Yeah, because you why never get your money back. That? Yeah. It's very hard in case of anything, when anything happens. Yeah, you see, there's no use of 
uh, remember, this is a cover that you have to buy. This is money that you have to spend to get the cover from insurance company. Exactly. But if the insurance company won't come through for you, if, <clears throat> for example, you get to a motor accident and it takes four long to get compensated, it takes a year, two years. You know, as we speak right now, there's a company I know that has taken two years to compensate a client. That is a very long you know, time. What 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 exactly is going on in exactly. this industry? Wow. In this okay. country. Yes, that's true. So maybe so no. those are some of the things that make it not prosper. But yeah. as you said, you sit at the helm of the Bema Intermediaries Association of Kenya. Yeah. What does that entail? Who's who's under your umbrella <coughs> association? Well, I'm the chairman of um over ten thousand insurance agencies. Ten thousand agents, okay. Right? Okay. Right? Um, uh, the, the, the association, Bema Intermediary Association of Kenya. Basically, takes care of our welfare. Okay. And you find that before this association came came around around to the, uh, 20, 2014, there was actually nobody, nobody taking care of, of insurance the agents, interest of the agents. Of the interest of How the much do these agents generate in terms of revenue in this? They sector? generate quite a lot because I mean, agents from from the field, yes. they just generate about seventy percent of the insurance business in this country. What is the last figure in terms of insurance premiums that was recorded? Uh, that, that that was uh, last year. We did about two hundred and ten billion. Two hundred and ten billion. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So agents, we say, they just could be doing something of upwards of one hundred eighty billion. One hundred and eighty billion. You know. What is this figure in the previous year, twenty eighteen? Twenty eighteen was about. 200 and uh, about about uh, 200 billion 200 billion yeah. what was it five years ago five years ago was about 150 billion 150 so you, the you growth find, is very yeah, slow yeah, you, you, find, you find growth growth of insurance premiums yes goes up, goes by about 10 10 percent every year 10 percent every Between year 10 and 15 percent okay every year okay every year. and it's, it's it's quite consistent but you find when we talk about growth of premiums it doesn't necessarily mean more people are joining the sector yes so to speak to ensure and remember as of uh, last year, <clears throat> insurance penetration has, has actually gone down in this country. All right. Because insurance penetration is measured as a percentage of the GDP. Yes. You find the GDP is growing faster than insurance penetration, that the insurance uptake <clears throat> is going. Yes. It was uh, sometime by, uh, around 2016, it was around 2.8%. All right. <clears throat> now, 2018, it's gone to about 2.43%. 2.43%. 2.43%. It's down. It's going down. We find companies in uh, like like uh, South Africa is about fifteen percent. Okay. South Africa. What helps South Africa? Is it regulation? <clears throat> because I know for sure I must take car insurance. Yeah. Because the law requires me to that's do so. That's right. So that's one of the things. So is it that there's slightly uh, better or different regulation in South Africa? Why is the penetration higher there? It's about awareness. Awareness. There's nothing else. Okay. You see, bitter is something I'm saying. Yes. If you have a robust insurance sector that pays that comes through for you in terms of need, it's all rocket science. Yes. People will come in, people will be knocking on the doors to ensure. You know, you, you find, like, for example, in developed countries, yes. you basically go out to look for insurance cover. Okay. You go out to look for, for it. different no elements. No one has to come for you. Okay. No one has to come and convince you. Bitha, you need domestic cover mm. for, your, for your whatever, yes. for your household goods. Okay. You need this. <clears throat> and also remember, there's something you said about motor insurance. But insurance Kenya, in Kenya, is basically compulsory. It is compulsory. Right. So then I want to imagine it makes up the majority of the 210. That, that, that's, that's right. Yes. That's right. And medical cover. And medical. Because people are a little bit aware about medical. Okay. But we say, if motor insurance was not compulsory in this country, how much would be the penetration? What would be the penetration, actually? What do you think? Be, would it, it be, be 10 it billion? Be, it would be... It to be now we talk about 210 billion. Yes. Maybe it'd be something like 100 billion. 100 billion. So almost. Because motor makes up so motor much. Motor is like 50 percent, 50, 60. Motor, motor, motor is uh, motor is quite high. Uh, over the class of insurance. Yes. <clears throat> motor is about 24 percent. Okay. And how the, the the major uh, classes of insurance that make uh, take up a lot of. Um, Premiums <coughs> is motor and medical insurance. Medical is what maybe another 20 24 percent, yeah, yeah, just okay, about, just about the same slightly below. Money. All right, so, so if I both them take about 50 percent, 50 percent, then the rest is. now come in. Okay, what we are have, the rest? Actually, we have life, yes, we have life insurance, we have uh, like domestic cover insurance, okay, <coughs> uh, public. There are so many other classes of insurance. Okay, let me, let me just let me circle just uh, <coughs> circle uh, in into that. Point. Mm. So motor is about uh, motor and medical are about fifty percent. Then there's domestic. Then there's life insurance. And the rest. So as 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 a 
as an umbrella body, as the chairman of the 10,000 agents, yeah. where do you constantly see growth? Where have you seen growth in the last one year? Where do you expect growth in the next actually, two the, years? The main growth actually that has been happening eh, yes. is actually medical. Medical. But also, tend to think, is because of the NHIF. Yes. It's been made compulsory and stuff like that. And also, there's, this, there's a big, big awareness regarding medical insurance. Okay. You know? Apart from now, the, the scandal that we had the other day of the hospitals. Yes. Overcharging clients as far as, uh, for example, they find out that you have an insurance cover. Then they, <coughs> then they come and inflate your bills and stuff like that. You know, there are so many things that need to be curbed for insurance growth to be actually realized. In the medical insurance field, yes. if you find, you have to, you, the moment you have a cover of something like 100,000 or 200,000 shillings, but the hospital realizes that you have a cover, a medical insurance cover, they go all out. I'm like, like, let's just do tests. To finish it, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's do, just, let's do No eyes are not, they're not very clear today. Yeah. Are you sure? I mean, <laughs> you could die tomorrow. I've seen this before. <laughs> okay, fear. Fear and greed. Anyway, yeah. fear and greed are the key drivers for any industry, if you think about it. Mm. Okay, interesting. So, so <clears throat> but the point I say is this. This industry has to be very, very well regulated for it actually to grow. Okay. Because as you speak right now, the regulation of this industry is completely out. Why would you say that? <clears throat> we have so many ideas and, and plants that are brought, that, that, are, that are floated into the insurance sector, right? Yes. The other day we talked, uh, that there was this uh, virtual insurance certificate, whereby uh, the certificate, the, the, the motor certificate that is, gets sent directly to your phone, right? Is it good? Is it bad? Right? What do you think? It's good as far as making our work easier. Of we course, are, even we as, as a consumer as, as well. As a consumer. Yes. But then, now the major problem is this. That whatever you get sent to, the, 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 the sticker, when it comes in soft, you've got to print it. Yes. Right? And stick it onto your car. Why can't we make it that you don't have to print it and stick it on your car? When, if a traffic cop comes to you, you just have to show them your phone. That's true. Because look at it this way. If you've got to print it, You've got to print on a normal paper. You put it on your windscreen, it can't take a week. Yes. Before that thing fades. That's true. Right? Number two, how many people in this country have smartphones to print? Okay. How in many? Nairobi, at least, there are a considerable number. Uh, Out maybe, there, perhaps maybe. not. Okay. But, but the issues are about making work easier. Yes. If it gets printed to you, you've got to start looking for a cyber to print. That's true. Right? That's true. The, 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 old, the old stick hole we have is that you pay, it's delivered to you. Yes. Remember, this old sticker is made on special paper. Yes, it is. Special paper that if you print, it can go a whole year. Okay, without, fair enough. Mm -hmm. With, it can go a whole year without... Without fading so and maybe stuff some like some without destruction. Okay. So let me say, uh, to a certain extent, huh? Uh, uh, they're good ideas, but these good ideas need to be hammered out. Okay. Right? So, in outside of that key regulation that probably the methodology and the application is not does not make a lot of sense, common mm. sense. What mm. are the other two or three key highlights in terms of regulation that you expect to see this year? Well, we, we also ex we, there's, there, there are quite a number of things. Yes. You see, uh, the industry associations, BIMA Intermediate Association of Kenya, for the insurance agents, we have uh, AIBK, that's uh, Association of Insurance Brokers. Yes. We have AKI, Association of Kenya Insurance. Yes. In fact, these three, bo these three bodies are very, very important to the insurance sector. This three bodies, as we speak, are not in the Insurance Act. Okay, so they need to be recognized. Yeah, so okay. what, you mean, what you need is this, this body should be put in the Insurance Act. Why? So they can regulate their members. You cannot, have a, you cannot have an industry where the members are not regulated. Okay. And that's also say, in the insurance sector, there are so many rogue agents. Fraud and corruption. Who do a lot of corruption. So they need to just be put under a proper structure. That's right. Okay, fantastic. That's right. Okay, Washington, let us just take a quick break. We will be back shortly. Engage with us on Twitter. That is Metropole TV or you can also engage with me directly. That is Bithem Wema on Twitter. What we want to know, would you invest in the insurance sector today? Are you happy with the dividend yield of 3.2%? And in other words, do you actually see any growth opportunities in this sector which would make it worth your while to actually be an investor in this sector? Either as an intermediary or as an investor on the securities exchange. Let your questions flow and we will be looking to answer that. See you after the break.